There is no spiritual warfare. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm just jumping on to do a quick video. If you don't know what I do, I do channeled writings and I do share them with you as I get them to and recently last couple of days I've been getting a lot um just at random points of throughout the day and one of them today um actually I was uh at um at work and so uh coming in um you know in my in the way that I receive the information is different sometimes depending on um where I'm getting the information from channeling it and as what space I'm in, right? And so sometimes I will just have, like if I'm in uh, meditation, I'm fully open, right? And so it just drops down in. But like if I'm doing my daily activities, it's, you know, fighting for space, you know, through my concentration, my intention, my focus, whatever I'm working on throughout the day, um, periodically. Um, so today uh, I had a couple writings actually dropping in. And so I was trying to multitask, you know, writing stuff down as I'm receiving the information. Because I can't, uh, you know, naturally, of course, just stop do what I'm doing at, at certain points uh, throughout the day to like write. So I'm kind of writing and receiving as it's coming. Um, but I'm going to do one of the readings for uh, one of the topics it was talking about. Now, all these uh, that I'm receiving is going into a book. I already have two books out there. Uh, there's two pre-books, and then there's the one where it gives you like invocations um, as well as passages for uh, the healing journey, um, healing the karmic overlay. And so that's, those are on Amazon already. Um, and the, this is another one with channel writings that just comes in. And this has been going on. Um, I've been sharing a little bit of my journey on the YouTube station and just giving you some insights to that, you know, with how everything's been evolving um, since my awakening death experience and so forth. But just sharing little clips of it, you know, as far as everything evolving. When it actually started, I was actually uh, working at an addiction clinic as a mental health tech, and it, it just started evolving from that point. And so I've just been receiving channeling information um, of higher consciousness, spiritual uh, topics, things like that, you know, since then. And it just keeps coming, <laughs> you know. Um, and there's a video out there on you know, my journey to doing to doing this and the writings and things like that as well. So check those out. But um, I'm going to go with um, this one here today um, for you. And so basically, you know, it just came in, you know, there's no spiritual warfare, you know, and a lot of us at this time may want to because of our belief systems, um, uh, say if that's untrue, you know, or believe that it is a spiritual warfare that we're going through right now. Um, so the information and it's really about how you're really looking at it and how you understand yourself and the perceptions that we've taken on over time, you know, like with religion and the belief systems and things like that. So uh, I'm just going to read what I got. And, you know, if it resonates, it resonates. And if it doesn't, you know, that that's okay as well. So topic is here that there is no spiritual warfare going on, right? Uh, the only spiritual warfare that is going on is within yourself, right? And that's saying that whatever, if you're, if you're understanding the concept that you know, we create our own rally, we create our own suffering, we make the choices, we choose what we're doing. And if we're not loving and kind and peaceful within ourselves, it reflects out into the world, right? And so that's basically kind of what it's saying. The only spiritual warfare, because we're spiritual beings in a human concept right now, this body suit, what is going on is within you, right? And 
it goes on to explain that. It says, which is your humanness, right? Over your spiritual self, right? So your divine self, your true self. It's the uh, warfare between you and yourself, right? And or it is the spiritual warfare. It would be if it was, no, sorry. It says, which is your humanness? Or if it was a spiritual warfare, it would be peace, right? Meaning, if it was your spirit, a spiritual warfare, it would be peace, right? So it's a human war. It's not a spiritual warfare. It's human warfare, right? Our ego, our identity, our belief systems, our attachments, you know, things that are creating this because on a divine level connected with source is love and so in love you don't do the things that we do in our human <laughs> version of ourselves you know hating hurting killing being um angry at others or ourselves or self-torture things that we've been doing and working you know in this play that we're playing right so it's not a spiritual warfare we are spiritual beings and a human, and so it's a human warfare, <laughs> right? We're fighting one another because we don't realize who we truly are, and we don't recognize the other person as ourselves, which is source, right? Source in the body of both beings, which is related to each other, right? To the self, right? But if we're awakened, we can see that we are who they are, and they are who we are, which is the same, but we see differences because of our human concept, the suit that we're wearing and our belief systems and who we think we are, our ego, our identity, our wounds, our suffering, everything, you know, on, on the uh, surface, right? That is the human warfare, right? So it's not a spiritual warfare. There, It's not good versus evil or bad versus this it's it's our concepts our realities our structures that we've created that we believe something is outside of ourselves versus our true self which is our spiritual higher conscious being right we have different levels of who we are on you know and on those different levels different consciousness but the true being is the one divine connected to source right which is our relation um and then it says so if it was spiritual warfare, then it would be peace, right? Because spiritual beings. So you think it is outside of you, but you are your own worst nightmare. You create your own suffering and refuse to take action to change it, right? And so instead of turning in, we're always reflecting outward. What's within is without, right? Without, with within. And so you create your own suffering and refuse to take action to change it. So how can we change it? We can work on ourselves, develop ourselves, you know, things like that, self-healing, um, meditation, yoga, healthy beha behaviors. There's a lot of things that we can do to make this peaceful, which will reflect the peacefulness outside, you know, in the world around us. And then it says, you are just fighting your yourselves including others in your fights with who you are or who you believe you are. And it's not outside of yourselves because you think it comes from them and you don't know yourself. So you're not knowing your, yourself and because you don't know yourself. You don't know them. So you can't possibly know them if you don't know yourself. Right. And, and to know yourself, you have to turn in and not reflect upon the out, outside world of your disagreements. Right. So to get to a place of peace and love in the world around you, you know, and this has gone through many teachers and they talk about it all the time. You turn in, you make yourself peaceful and then your world outside is peaceful, right? If you're, you're fighting with yourself within, it reflects out and that's how you are showing up in the world. And so many teachers talk about this and this is just reconfirming it in another way. So it says, like I was saying, I'm fighting your, you're just fighting with yourself, right? Because they are you, they are spiritually you is in a form just like you are, right? So you're just fighting yourself. But the fighting within yourself comes from within you and your human self, your spiritual self, right? It's how you are within that you are without, 
if that makes sense. It's a reflection of how you are within yourself. If you're having a bad day, you know, how are you going to be in the world outside of you if you have to go to work or go to grocery store? Are you being mean to that person because you're having a bad day? Or are you, you know, how are you reflecting outward, right, to other people? Um, are you one with your emotions, your thoughts, your belief systems, um, your conditions, your ego? You know, um, so those conditions, you know, about ourselves that we think is true, but isn't. I'm going to do another video on that at another time on our emotions, thoughts, and belief systems, things like that. Um, and because you think it comes from them and you don't know yourself, right? We to turn to know ourselves, we have to turn in. Right. And so in not knowing yourself, you don't know anyone else because you can't. If you can't even know yourself, you can't know anybody else because they're the same underneath the, the human form. Right. And so you fight your your fight becomes trying to beat the system, which is survival. Right. And you can see that in the world today where we're trying to survive and we're thinking, oh, well, they're out to get me or they're trying to take my land or they're trying to do this and we're trying to do that. Um, and so instead of turning in and getting to know ourselves and m transforming ourselves and showing up as love or kindness, peace, happiness, joy, or abundance, you know, or aligned with our higher self, it becomes more about survival. And so from survival comes all these things like war and devastation and suffering, right? Um, and so to beat the system to make yourself happy and comfortable with everything right and so when we're not happy within it's it's basically saying when we're not happy within um we're trying to run off of survival and trying to make our surroundings happy and peaceful and blissful and we can't do that because we're not that within ourselves, right? But we're trying to make that happen on the outside level and control other people to make us happy, comfortable, joyful, right? We're using that as a means to make ourselves happy. And that can be in any way or fashion or form, right? whether it's control um, or making it about another person or trying to make them make me happy, you know, that doesn't make me happy what you're doing instead of turning it around on yourself and making yourself peaceful. So that way, when you're in those spaces, because we're going to have those experiences, right? Not everybody's in the same place. So when you're able to make yourself happy within yourself and at peace, no matter what situation you get in, you're able to handle that in, in, on that level because you create that within yourself. So it doesn't matter how your outside world is um, based on what other people are bringing to the table, you yourself can bring peace to the, the part of the play that you're a part in, right? So the outside world doesn't affect you when you're peaceful within yourself, right? Because you're able to reflect outwardly. And then you become a match to your outward outside world becomes a match to where you are, right? And so generally those things will kind of fade away from your space anyway, right? But if you're a match to it, you're just going to draw it into you, right? And so it says to, to make yourself happy, you're in survival, it's comfortable with everything. You're trying to fix the outside world and not do the inside world first, which is a horrible way to live life, which is suffering when you need to do it is all, all you need to do is to turn in, tap in, and tune into yourself and your higher guidance, your true self. Uh, it will happen for you, not as a result of you fighting against yourself for it. Is not, it's the not knowing of the path and who you are, which is simple to do and understand. Who you are is a result of who you've been along the seeds. We like to call it the chain of evolution. It's changed from many lifetimes, the form. So the form has changed many lifetimes and gone through the emulation of its needs as time has progressed, gone forward. So you're basically, and I've talked about this in, in the channeling of the book, you're basically who you are now is the, the result of what you were in the past, right? And so that's through evolution. And it's the, they're saying it's the seed that's been planted up until this very moment, 
but it's called we kind of relate to it as a chain of evolution like the chain of life or the cycles of life right from lifetime lifetime reincarnation and things like that um so today uh, you could be a snake tomorrow a rabbit and so forth but time never time never changes and this was really cool to really have them drop this down because like it had i get visions and i can see when they're saying certain things and it gives me like a deeper insight and a vision of what they're saying they were showing me um how this is actually but to put it in words is not always easy so i'm just going to read what they have here um so it says time never changes you do you're the one evolving so everything is just as it is you're the one that's evolving your perception is changing your appearance is changing your um everything about you your looks uh who you are what you believe in where you're living who you're talking to who becomes your new friends you know all these different things everything is changing um except for time time and a lot of times we think oh well time doesn't exist and it doesn't exist on that side right it's it because it's standing still time it doesn't exist right and the way they were giving it to me is because it's it's just existing as time it doesn't time it change we're the ones that change and we're the ones that perceive it to change we're because we're evolving right and so it doesn't really exist because it it doesn't move it doesn't change it doesn't flow it just it's one it's it's existence that's why it doesn't exist right it just exists as time but time is an actual action in our perception in the human form as time and so it was a little twist on how they had how i knew it before so which was kind of interesting and it made sense to me it just made things click um so um time never changes you do you're the one evolving everything else stays the same so time changes the rhythm and path of life around you and who you are who you are becoming it's not a mathematical equation that you can figure this out just take a look at it uh you're the one changing around the clock just as the planets do around the earth so if you look at the earth as time everything else is revolving around it and that's the view that they gave me so it's like we're the ones spinning around the earth on our own little worlds per se and that's just an example it's not true but it's just to give you a kind of like a visual um like time is considered how they were showing me as the earth and we are going around time right time's not evolving around us and we're not evolving through time because time doesn't exist time is like a steadiness um, of evolution through the path and patterns of life right hope that makes sense and so you are changing around the clock just as the planets do around the earth it's all been given to you and for you which means it does it for you you don't have to do anything and so it makes you have so what makes you think you have to do anything for anything else if your life is doing anything and everything for you what makes you think that you have to do anything instead of allowing but because we're the human we think that we have to do things right in order for them to happen but they're actually just happening for us right and so it's us in the doing of it that keeps it from us and that kind of goes into like the whole manifesting and that talks a little bit about that you know coming up here about manifesting um so everything for everything so what makes you think that you have to do anything for anything else if it's already done for you right so just let it happen for you bring your awareness into presence in the present moment it's not the past the future but in the present moment and you'll have a different view see it happening in the body in the mind in the memory it's the stages of evolution everything is happening that is meant to happen and will happen in the way that is meant to happen if you make this mind body spirit yours your way right if you make this in a good way an abundant way a happy way a healthy way a, um, a loving way kind way um 
then everything happens the way you want it outside of you. And again, back to the reflection of what's within is without, right? So, but when you're raging with war within yourself, you're against yourself and the world and it shows it will not cooperate with you, right? And so then you're fighting the world outside of you, which is emptiness. It's like putting on boxing gloves and going into the arena and just having another person look like you and you're fighting yourself, right? Because they are source just as you are, right? There's no difference. It's just different players in the play, right? But we're all source underneath the players, right? Um, and it will bring you to what is going on inside. If you find peace within, your world will become peaceful. If you find harmony within, the world will become in harmony with everything. If it's peace you want, then be peace. But you can't be money. This is where it gets into manifesting, which is kind of cool. You are, uh, if you want money, that is of value because money has value, right? Because the money that we put value on, right? It's different than peace. You know, it, we kind of put value on peace, but peace is just peace, the energy of peace. But for money, we put a value on it. It's a dollar, you know, this buys this and we trade this and this, right? So it's it's value. And so to have money be a value to yourself and to others, right? And so that is your worth, right? What you're spending your money, your time on, what you're doing, how you're being in the world, things like that is your value and your worth of what you're spending your money on, right? And that's reflective to you by money and, and whatever comes in your way, right? And it can be any any form. It can be, you know, doesn't have to be per se money, but abundance and whatever else that's coming your way, right? So uh, peace brings you back into alignments. So to, oh wait, so to have money be of value to yourself and to others, peace brings you back into alignment while the value brings you abundance, right? And so what do you value? Your life, question mark. Your life has the greatest value. If it didn't, it wouldn't be here. Or it is your soul's house, right? You... This is just like the, the framework of your human experience um, in the creation of it. Um, we shed the body when we pass, right? And that is a given. I mean, we, we can observe that. We experience it. We know that. So this is just a house for the spirit to uh, thrive and live through you, right? But you swear by it, right? Um, and that this is who you are is what that means. You swear by it. This is who I am. And make it enslaved by others by being a slave to them and not yourself. And so instead of uh, working on yourself, we're always engaging in the outside world, not the inside world. And this is learned by not understanding who we are first, right? And so we're not taught this as children on many levels unless you've grown up or know, you know, or in a yogic system where they, where they teach it. So a lot of us don't know it and we don't understand it, who we are until later we come across the path that teaches it. Uh, like in my experience, I lived under a rock until I had the awakening and then the kundalini and then the death experience and then the out of body experiences and then meditation and yoga and all that. And it's totally changed, you know, everything for me. Um, until then I lived under a rock, right? So it's like a whole 90, 100 degree in that turn for me, you know? Um, and then with the channelings here. So, um, and this is learned uh, by not understanding who we are first. Everyone should be taught this uh, inner reflection method. Uh, and so learning who we are first and then we'll know other people, right? And so we'll be able to know what's um, coming or what we, our experiences is with them. We'll have a different type of level and understanding communication based with other people. Right. Um, so turning in um, and questioning yourself, not others. And like magic, you'll receive the answers to the questions like harmony. You'll be in balance. Right. 
So it's saying your inner reflection method is just turning in and questioning yourself and just be patient and wait for the answers to come. You'll receive them. This method of turning in will quicken the thought process of knowing um, everything you everything so you don't have to turn out for anything. Right. So if you're turning in, you have, because you have all the information here, if you turn in and you ask the questions instead of outside of yourself, you'll receive all the answers. If you ask outside of yourself, you receive answers, but it's just leads you on the path to more questions, right? You'll have understanding within yourself versus outside because not everybody knows, right? So they only know what they know by their based on their past. So that's why it's saying the method of turning in will quicken the thought process of knowing everything. You'll know everything if you turn in. You won't need to have the outside knowledge to understand because it'll be shown to you. It's like the minute you uh, pass over and you go home, you, you you know you're done here. You in, you you do this and you and it's like um for me it was a little bit of a slow process. I observed it happening. Um, and it's like you you just become reconnected with everything and you just know, right? So the knowledge just comes back in um, versus when you're here, you know, you don't have that connection unless you're turning in and going within yourself, right? And so you understand yourself. Um, and so you don't have to turn out to anything outside of yourself if you're turning in, right? You'll have all the information, uh, your divine connection. Because you carry these dimensions within yourself, not outside of yourself. So it's not outside of you. It's within yourself. And it says it's when you are looking outside that you end up with more questions. And so you are the creator over your own life, right? The master. And so it has been given to you. To, and then it goes on to talk about the law of attraction, right? And so using it for good, bad, not good, not bad or evil. Um, it's not used for you to, it is used for you to see where it is that you are, which is a reflection, right? If you know about law of attraction, um, and it's just giving you the reference the law of attraction, if you know where it is that you are, it's, it's a reflection of where you are, what you're receiving, or where you are along the path, right? And so, but most of us use it as a way of means, as a way to get a car, a wife, or a house, right? So, um, you can use it for those things, which is helpful in our lives to have these things. Of course, you know, car gets you to work, gets you to the grocery store. Having a wife or a husband is nice, kids, house, things like that, if you're using it for that. Um, but if we're turning in, working on ourselves, getting our in selves into those states, it'll automatically just come, which is going to be a match to where we are, right? And so uh, the law of attraction is basically meant to be a navigation tool. Right. But we use it. A lot of people use it um, as a means uh, to get things. And so it can be both. But manifesting is a way to navigate life, not your riches, like most use it for without knowing you can use it in life. Right. And so it does help with life, but it's not what life is used for. Right. Basically saying you know, you can use it for that, but its purpose is to help you navigate life, to tell you where you are in your life, right? Help you uh, by manifesting things and help you to navigate the world around you and to help you get the things that you need in order to move and move forward, right? So uh, manifesting part of it is like, what are you receiving or what? where are you in life, right? And that's part of the teachings, Right. So if you're not receiving a million dollars, you're not in alignment with it. Right. <laughs> uh, if you're not married, then you're not ready. Right. So it's a navigation tool, not just for getting items that we want. Right. Um, but a lot of people just use it for that. They don't use it for life navigation is basically what it's saying. Um, and so if you're not in a line, uh, you don't receive, which puts you further in the ditches. Uh, and it doesn't work. So you can't manifest things from where you are if you're not in a line, which is why it doesn't work for many. You're not in line and you're out of line with yourself. So you're not in line to receive and you're out of line with yourself. 
So to receive, to you need to get in line with yourself in order to receive, right? Because then that puts you in line with whatever it is that you're wanting, if that makes sense. Because you don't know yourself. So doing some self-work, right? Turning in. Um, you're going to receive when you are instead. Yes, yeah, self-work. Uh, you're going to receive where you are instead first. So you can see where you are going and how to get there. So if you're trying to manifest a thousand dollars, right? And it's not coming, it's because you're you're not in line and you're not aligned to yourself worthy of that right and so doing self-work helps put you there in that space right so self-work is part of the process of manifesting and navigation of life and so basically what it's saying is you're going to receive where you are before you get that thousand dollars because if you're not in alignment you're going to receive what you're getting when you're trying to manifest something or asking for something or wanting something, you're going to receive where you are versus where you are wanting that thousand dollars. And so when you do self work, that helps you to navigate to where it is that you're getting that thousand dollars. So when you get that thousand dollars, you are where you want to be, right? It's a navigation tool. Um, and so it is the light and the darkness. It's a tool for life, not just for stuff <laughs> manifesting. And so be gentle with yourself if you have, uh, more self-work to do before manifesting process works for you and not against you because when we're not receiving um the things that we're wanting to manifest and as we're going on the path uh, it can be you know discouraging stressful things like that um and so it's just kind of uh gonna it's it's going to work against you. You know, if you're not peaceful within, you know, your world outside of you is not going to be peaceful, right? You're going to attract what it is that you're, um, where it is that you are, right? And so it's, it's working against you, right? If you don't know who this is and you don't, who you are and you don't make this happy and blissful within yourself, then you're going to be out of alignment and it's going to work against you. And so it is always working. It's always on. Uh, you're the one that's off, right? So um, law of attraction, um, that's always constantly working. So no matter where we are on the path, we're always manifesting something. So it's always working. It's always on. We're the ones that get off the path. Even though we're not off the path, we're still on the path. We're just not in that space of awareness and energy vibration right and so things that we are we have to get there so there's no actual leaving the path where people say oh well you're lost it's it's not that you're lost it's just that we're not in alignments right um so it it can kind of have two different meanings there and so to get back on meditation alignment work self-healing forgiveness take a break and have fun in life right don't take it always so so serious uh, life is not meant to be serious. Life is meant to be fun. And that's only except when you're not, when it's not in your favor. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, yeah, that makes sense because like whenever we're not receiving, you know, of course life isn't fun. You know, when we're struggling, life isn't fun. And, but we make it out to be instead of, okay, I'm not where I am yet, but I'm on my way there. And uh, manifesting teaches that you know the rules of that and so it's just making your your yourself your mind your body your spirit all in alignments right of where you are because if you're if you're not happy you know and you got these thoughts going on and then your emotions kick in because you're thinking the wrong thoughts and it's making you feel bad and then you got your emotions you got your body and you're unha feeling unhealthy and all this going on is just going to be craziness and it's going to show up in your world in different ways, the craziness that's going on within yourself because you're reflecting the energy, right? And so it's not going to be a match to what you're actually seeing. It's going to be showing up to you in the energy that's being put out and whoever is attached or whatever is attached to that energy is going to reflect back. So you are going to have different experiences. There's no, um, it's not saying that it's an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth. It's just saying it's going to be a match and it's going to show up for you, right? It's going to come up in different ways. And so if life is not meant to be 
or life is not meant to be fun except for when it's not in your favor, right? So um, life happens every moment, which means making change. Um, so you can make change at every moment, right? You have that opportunity, that, that ability to make change and choices. Um, with that. And that's pretty much everything that had happened. And then it kind of died off. And it was interesting um, because uh, in my ear, I had gotten this, um, some people will hear like buzzing um, sounds, things like that. Um, but I'll, I'll get like where it, like my ear is kind of like cupped. It's like somebody's literally like cupping my ear and, and like, and so the information starts coming in and I'm like, okay, I start receiving and I'm getting information. Um, now, that's not the only way that it starts happening, but sometimes I'll just get the drop down. Like I said in the beginning, you know, if I'm meditating, it's just a clear channel. It just drops down in. But that was interesting um, when I had received that. It was just like somebody was like giving me the little message and my ear was uh, covered over. Um, but definitely, you know, it gives you different signs. I don't know if you guys do any channeling or if you guys have had the, you know, experiences. But a lot of times when you have the ringing um, or, you know, maybe the cupping and the, for a little bit and then it goes goes away, those are uh, your guides, information coming in. And if you do meditation, you can tune in and receive information from there. Uh, and of course, that's definitely depending on where you are on your journey, right? So, all right. Well, uh, thanks for tuning in. And I'm going to do a couple other videos because I did have a few other uh, writings drop in as well today and um, especially over the last couple couple days um, it's been quite a lot of channeling and writing so I'm going to end it there and thanks for tuning in like subscribe and share and happy journeys